at AP Review. This is 2017 ABBC free response three. All right, so we're given this graph that consists of a line, a semicircle, and two more lines. Uh, right away, going into this, at some point, you're going to be asked to integrate this function uh, and use geometry to find the area under these curves. Just throwing that out there now. So uh, the function f is differentiable on the closed interval from negative 6 to 5. Uh, we know that f of negative 2 is a 7. Uh, and then this is the graph of f prime, not f. Uh, it consists of three line segments, one, two, three, and a semicircle uh, in this picture. It's much better on the real AP picture, so don't judge too harshly. All right, uh, part A, find the values of f of negative 6 and f of 5. So this is the first fundamental theorem of calculus question. If we integrate f prime from one bound to another, then we find two values of f. Okay, so if we integrate, for instance, in part A, um, if we, we know f of negative 2, so if we integrate from negative 2 to 5 of f prime of x dx by the first fundamental theorem of calculus, we're going to get f of 5 minus f of negative 2. Well, we know f of negative 2, and we want, so this is a value that we can find using basic geometric formulae to find area. This is the value that we want, and this is a value that we know, right? So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to add this f of negative 2 over, right? And I'm going to get that f of 5 is f of negative 2, which is 7, plus the area I get when I integrate from negative 2 up to 5, right? Well, keep in mind that area that's below the axis will be negative, so I'm going to get a negative semicircle. We'll deal with that in a sec, right? Plus a triangle that has a height of 2 and a base of 3, so plus this positive triangle, right? So I'm pretty sure I get 7, uh, plus, I'm going to go ahead and make this a negative 1 half pi. The radius of this circle is 2, So, uh, but notice I made it negative because I recognize it's below the axis. So I'm going to square the 2 and get a 4, right? And then the triangle, which is above the axis, so it's positive, will be 1 half the base, which is 3 units, times the height, which is 2. So I get that f of 5 is a 7, right, plus a 3, so that's a 10, right, minus a 2 pi. And that's my answer. Right, so 10 minus 2 pi. Great. The other one, right, so that's that's the first one. The other one's going to involve uh, either integrating backwards or doing some shenanigans where you change signs. It's up to you which one you prefer. So if you want to do the thing where you always make the lower bound the the bottom of the, like if the, the lower number the lower bound, that's fine. So, so to continue with A, if you want to find F of negative 6, you could integrate from negative 6 to, to negative 2, which is fine. Um, but if you want, the other option, if you want, is to integrate in reverse. The thing to keep in mind is if you integrate from negative 2 to negative 6, then this area, since it's above the axis, would come out negative, not positive. So um, I think most people sort of default to the fact that it's easier to integrate in uh, ascending numerical order, right? So we're integrating f prime. So we're going to get f of negative 2, which is the thing I know, minus f of negative 6, which is the thing I want. If I add the f of negative 6 over and subtract the integral over, I get f of negative 6 equals f of negative 2, which is a quantity I know, minus the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of my f prime of x dx, right? Which is just the area of this triangle that has a base of 1, 2, 3, 4, and a height of 2, right? So I'm going to get 7 minus 1 half the base, which is 4, times the height, which is 2. So I end up getting 7 minus 4, which is a 3. Right? Cool. Uh, let's go on to part B. All right. Part B. On what intervals is f increasing? Justify your answer. Okay, so when we talk about this, we want to make one of those flow charts, right? The question they're asking is when is f increasing, right? That's what they asked in words. First thing you want to do is translate that into the mathematical definition, right? The mathematical definition of f increasing is that f prime of x is greater than zero, right? That's, that's the thing we would need mathematically. Well, then we want to translate it into what's happening in this problem, right? So in this problem, f prime is the given graph so what we're looking for is when the given graph is above the x-axis, right? That's what we're looking for. So I look with my eyeballs, right? And if you want to sound fancy, you can say by visual inspection, but really you just mean using your eyeballs. 
uh, the given graph is above the x-axis on the window from six inclusive, uh, sorry, negative six inclusive, and they did not give me any restrictions on the window, so negative six inclusive, uh, until at negative two, but it's not above the x-axis for the entire time of negative two, so I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, not included. And then the same thing, it, it comes up above the axis again at two, and then at the end point at five, it's actually uh, again at zero. So it's gonna be the window from negative six to negative two and from two to five. The AP disagrees with me on the brackets. Um, so their argument is that this is true for f prime of x being greater than zero, but that it's technically increasing on the ends because you can tack increasing along with either either side. You can either make the, the point where it changes a part where the function is increasing or decreasing. It's technically doing neither. Uh, so this is the answer I'm going to stick with. The AP would like you to put brackets on this. I disagree with them on that point. All right, uh, part C. Find the absolute minimum value of f on the closed interval from negative 6 to 5. Justify your answer. Cool. So that's going to relate a lot to what we just did, actually, but we need some room. So uh, what's kind of crazy about this is that this graph for you that they gave you is basically already an f prime sign chart, right? So this graph, right, if you look at this graph, f prime is 0, right? So like if I wanted to make an f prime sign chart, f prime is 0 here at negative 2. f prime is 0 again at 2, right? f prime is 0 again at 5, and there's an endpoint at negative 6. So physically, my f prime graph is above the axis, right, uh, which means f prime is positive. Then f prime is below the axis, and then f prime is above the axis again, so it's positive, right? So that means that what f is doing is going up, down, and up again, right? So since they asked you for the absolute minimum value, the two possible candidates for mins are at negative 6 and at 2, right? I mean, I did a bad job of lining it up because it should have been there, but you get the idea. So there you go. Slightly better. So I have two candidates for minimum values, uh, negative 6 and 2. I already know the value at negative 6 because I already found it, right? So I already know that f of negative 6 is a 3, right? Uh, and I can find this value, right? I can find this value. Uh, and if I do that, right, if I, if, so I have this sign chart, the other way to do it is honestly, these are the only critical numbers. You could just find the value at all of them. Uh, even though this is a max, you know that this is a 7, right? Uh, you know this is negative 2 comma 7, uh, and you actually know this one. You know even though this is a max, you know that this is 5 comma 10 minus 2 pi? Yeah. Um, uh, so the only coordinate you don't know is the min, right, that's here. And so when you want to find 2, you could find f of 2 by saying, oh, f of 2 is the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f prime of x dx plus that f of negative 2 right? Uh, and you could find this integral, right? Uh, we've already seen that this is a negative 2 pi, and then we just add the 7. Uh, so I get negative 2 pi plus 7, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of, okay, so I think if you've had me in class, you know I say this all the time, you can't actually ever consider pi to be 3, but if you're stuck making a rough estimate, you can think, hey, pi is probably 3-ish, right? So this would be like a negative 6 plus 7, which is about a negative, or which is about a positive 1, right? Positive 1 is definitely smaller. So negative 2 pi plus 7 is definitely smaller than 3. So the absolute minimum value is going to happen at, uh, they just asked for the absolute minimum value, and it's that one, right? Uh, so again, uh, you're not ever supposed to think of pi as 3 because it's not, and you should never write on your paper, oh, that's, an, that's the same as a 1 because it's negative 6 plus 7. It's not. But when you're stuck deciding which number is larger, you can think, hey, pi is 3-ish. Let me do math with it. It also works for e because e is also 3-ish. Pi is slightly larger than 3. e is slightly smaller than 3. But when you're stuck estimating, 3 is a good call. All right, part D. For, uh, for each of f double prime of negative 5 and f double prime of 3, find the value ex or explain why it doesn't exist. So. We've already seen that this is the given graph of f prime, right? So we have f prime. We now want to talk about f double prime, right? So f double prime of x is the derivative, right, with respect to x of f prime of x, meaning, right, if we're just like making our little logic here, it's the slope of f prime of x, right? So what we're looking for is the slope of the given graph. So when we're asked to find f double prime of negative 5, 
well, here's negative 5, and this is linear and has a slope that goes down 2, right 4. So down 2, right 4 is a slope of negative 1 half, right? Because this is the slope of f prime of x at x equals negative 5, right? Um, f double prime of 3, I think, is the other one they wanted. Yep, f double prime of 3, right? Does not exist because, uh, so if we want to be really picky about why it doesn't exist, uh, it's because the issue is that this function is not differentiable on the two sides. So, so f prime of x is not differentiable. Now, sometimes the AP is going to let you get away with that, right? It's not just differentiable. Uh, there is a point or a cusp, right? In this case, it's a point, right? Pointy thing like an absolute value. Um, but if they want you to be fancy, and sometimes they do want you to be fancy, sometimes they're going to want you to explain this in, in, in a bit more uh, a bit more detail. So if they want you to explain, or if you want to play it super safe, the reason that this thing doesn't exist, what it means to be not differentiable, is that the left-sided limit, right, so the limit uh, as x approaches 3 from the left, right, um, of the derivative of f prime, right, meaning f prime of x minus f of 3 over x minus 3, right, is not equal to the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, meaning f prime of x minus f prime, sorry, that was a prime of 3 over x minus 3, right, because this guy's slope, right, old school slope, is up to right 1, so this is a 2, which is not equal to uh, this guy's slope, which is uh, down to right 2, so it's a negative 1, right? So these two quantities aren't equal, so what makes this thing not differentiable is this, if you really want to get super picky about it. Um, you know, that said, there's any number of ways to point that out. Like, you know, you could arguably say, describe it and say it's a point or a cusp and you're not able to derive something at a point or a cusp. Uh, whether you get that point or not is going to depend on the AP and what year you're taking it, right? Um, so specifically, the AP guidelines for this year use this, but in the explanation they said that you have to say it doesn't exist and give an explanation. They did not say that the explanation explicitly had to reference the limit formula uh, for a derivative. So hard to know, but uh, that's the gist.